we will now talk about the internal structure of human heart. human heart and as we talked of the shape we said it is slightly triangular the base is wider and the apex gets narrower but because we have to see the structure which is inside the shape which we draw is slightly different and the diagram is big with many labels so let us start with all the four compartments first This is the wider base and the apex gets narrower. Now, when we make the wall, we have seen it is three layered, but we are drawing a simple wall here. The wall of oracles is normally slightly irregular as compared to the wall or inner wall of ventricle. And here we would draw a wall and then the wall of ventricle is slightly wavy there are certain ridges we label, uh, label these structures there are some which are bigger some which are smaller and this is the interventricular septum and the walls Now let us label it and try to understand why we have drawn these things in this manner and we will go chamber by chamber what is happening. This side is the left side. So this compartment and we will make the labels farthest so that we are able to see all the structures and I am writing the abbreviations here so that I get maximum space. This is the left atrium. This is the left ventricle. And these are the very commonly used uh, abbreviations that we are talking of. This is right atrium and this compartment is the right ventricle. The septum which is present between the two auricles is known as inter auricular septum and in this interauricular septum we see a depression this depression is known as this depression that we are seeing here is known as fossa ovalis this is a remain of foramen ovale in embryonic stage, there is an opening here, which is known as foramen ovale. That means mixing of blood takes place in the embryonic stage, but this opening closes at the time of birth. But a depression or a scar remains of that opening. That scar is known as fossa ovalis. So we say it is the remain or scar of foramen ovale, ovalis, sorry, ovalis, ovale. And many a times uh, we hear people saying, many a times means it's a rare thing, but we hear pe uh, people saying that that child has hole in the heart. Now, where is that hole? It is nowhere in the wall. They are talking about the same thing. Sometimes what happens is, this opening fails to close and that opening remains. So even after birth, mixing of blood takes place. And that is when hole in the heart term is used. They are actually talking about foramen ovale. And after birth, this opening closes, but we see a depression, which is known as fossa ovalis, which we see in this interventricular septum. This partition is the interventricular septum. Interventri 
muscular septum. So this depression is in the interauricular septum and here is in the ventricular septum. Just to have a comparison of the thickness of the wall, the auricles have thinnest walls, then is the right ventricle and the left ventricle has thickest wall. The purpose is, and we have seen that the thickest wall out of the three layers is the middle one, that is myocardium, which has the cardiac muscles. These two compartments have to pump the blood into lower compartments. So they would require less muscles and that is where this is thinner. This compartment is going to pump the blood to the lungs and the lungs are on the either side of the heart. So it is close. And this has to pump the blood to each and every part of our body. That means from head to toe. And that is why its muscles should be maximum. And that is why the wall of left ventricle thickest. So comparatively, thinnest are auricles. Then is the right ventricle. And thickest wall is of the left ventricle because it has to pump the blood all over the body. We will first talk about this compartment that is the right atrium. Right atrium and we have seen that auricles or atria are receiving compartments. So right atrium receives blood from the body with the help of two main veins. One brings the blood from the lower part of the body and other brings it from the upper part of the body. The one which brings from the upper part is known as the superior vena cava and the one which brings from the lower part of the body is known as inferior vena cava. They are also given one term, additional term. This is known as pre-caval and this is called the post-caval. These are the main veins which are bringing blood to the auricle. There is one more uh, vessel which is going to bring the blood from the wall of the heart. Heart is also supplied with blood and Artery is going to supply the blood. We call that artery as coronary artery. And this blood, after it has been, oxygen has been used by the muscles, the blood which is deoxygenated has to be poured back into the heart. And that is done with the help of an opening here, which is known as coronary sinus. So this opening is of coronary sinus. Coronary sinus is bringing blood from the wall of the heart. It opens here. So now from all over the body, the blood, deoxygenated blood has reached this compartment. From the body parts, normally the head region, neck region, upper to the heart, is brought by superior vena cava. This is superior vena cava opening here. And the blood vessel which brings the blood from all over the body which are or body parts which are below the heart is through the inferior vena cava, inferior vena cava or post cava. This is an opening of coronary sinus which brings deoxygenated blood from the wall of the heart. Out of these three, two have valves and valves are, are having a specific function and that is to prevent the backward flow of blood. The inferior vena, vena cava, it has valves. So we are making this structure here. These are valves. And let us label this. This valve is known as valve of Eustachius. And the coronary sinus also has valves and these valves are known as valves of Thabaceus. What about the superior vena cava? Superior vena cava is without valve. 
Now we said the function of the wall is to prevent the backward flow. That means when the auricle contracts, the blood from the auricle should go to the ventricle, not back into these openings. Why there is no valve here? There is a very specific reason. One, if this contracts, one, it is going to go up, then that would be against gravity. But the significance is this entry, the uh, superior vena cava, when it enters the auricle, it comes through an angle. So if this is the wall uh, of the right atrium and the blood vessel enters from here, from this angle. So whenever this wall contracts, this opening automatically closes. So there is no need of a wall. So this is the wall, entry is from here. As soon as the valve closes, this opening is going to close on its own, which is not the case in these two, that is inferior vena cava and uh, the coronary sinus. So these two have valves, superior vena cava is not having valves and the reason is it opens or it enters through an angle. So when auricles contract, this opening automatically closes. So there is no risk of the blood going back into the superior vena cava. So this compartment receives deoxygenated blood from all the body parts. Now the portion which is separating the auricle from the ventricle, we see these two flap like things. These flap like things, they are called the valves again. And because they are between auricles and ventricles, we can call them auriculoventricular valve. They are on the right side, so we can call them right auriculoventricular valves. So these are right auriculoventricular valves. They are also known as right AV valves. Right? AV is for auricular ventricle. And if we see this wall from the top, then it is going to look like this. If we see the section of the wall, then it is going to have these three flap-like things. These flap-like structures are known as cusps. This is a cusp. And we can see one, two and three cusps. That means this wall is a tri cuspid wall. So right auriculoventricular wall is a tricuspid wall. The reason why we call it tricuspid because there are three semicircular structures or cusps. Name which is given is on the basis of its location. It is between auricle and ventricle, so auriculoventricular. It is on the right side, so right auriculoventricular wall. And structurally, because it has three semicircular structures or cusps, we call it tricuspid valves. Now coming to the other uh, auricle and let us see from where it receives the blood. It receives the blood from the lungs. And the blood which is going to come from the lungs is oxygenated blood. So this oxygenated blood which will be coming into this would be brought by the pulmonary veins. If you remember, we talked about auricles and ventricles. Then this side receives deoxygenated and this side receives oxygenated. And when we were talking about the blood vessels, we said arteries, they take blood out of the heart, vein brings blood into the heart. And arteries take oxygenated blood with one exception and veins bring deoxygenated blood again with one exception. And that exception is this pulmonary vein. So now we will talk about the pulmonary veins and how many of those veins open into this left atrium.